Hey everyone, and welcome to the second part of the video. In this one, we're going to go from this to this, where we have a blinker show up on screen, where we have different animated text type and sequence, and that we see an indicator for the text that we're hovering over. This is where we left off in the previous video, so let's start modifying from here. The first thing we're going to do is add our blinker to our typed line component. To do so, we start by adding the class flex to our parent div, so that when we add the div for the blinker, it is placed next to our text instead of below our text. We add a cheeky letter A in there to give it some width. Then we make the background black and add some padding. We found that two pixels is perfect. Finally, to have the blinker not touch the text directly, we add a margin left of one. Now that we have the indicator for our blinker on screen, let's get started making it blink. To do so, we start by creating two data variables for the blinker. Blinking duration, which we set to 500 milliseconds, and show blinker, which we set to true. Then we're going to approach the animation the same way as we did for the text. We create a start blinker function. The first thing it does is switch the blinker on if it's off and off if it's on. And then it performs the same check as in typed text. If there is still some text that needs to be typed, we start a timeout of the blinking duration to call the start blinker function again, which will then turn on or off the blinker again and so on. Unlike for the typed text method, here we need to use an else. Since if the text is done typing, we need to ensure that we switch off the blinker. The next thing we do is make sure start blinker gets called for the first time. We do so in the start typing text function just before we call the method type text. This way the blinker starts when we start typing text. Now that we created the methods to turn the show blinker boolean on or off, let's use the boolean in the vif for the blinker. If vif is true, then the div shows up. If it's false, it's not drawn to the screen. And now to show our blinker animation, we need to fix a small mistake. Namely, instead of text and text shown, it needs to be this.text and this.text shown. And then we save and refresh. And there we go. We now have a blinker. If it's a little hard to see, we can reduce the blinking duration and see that the blinker blinks faster. I'll turn it back to 400 because I think that looks best. All right, our blinker works and looks good now. Now let's check out what it looks like if we add multiple animated lines of text. As you can see, they all animate at the same time. In certain situations, this can also look good, but let's take a look at how we can animate them in sequence without adding a hard-coded delay. To get started on this, we're going to have to add an extra prop to our typed line component. We're going to call it start trigger because we're going to use it as a trigger so that when this boolean turns true, the animation can start. In order to make this start trigger work, we go to our start typing method and in there we say while not this.start trigger, so while start trigger is false, we wait to resolve a new promise of a timeout that is set to 100 milliseconds. This way, while the start trigger boolean is false, we enter the while body and we wait 100 milliseconds and then check the condition of the while again. And if the start trigger turns true, we move on past the while and call start blinker and type text. To use the start trigger prop, we need to go to our parent component and add the start trigger equals true to the first line so that it gets triggered from the start of loading the page. Now to get each of the type line components to type in sequence, so after each other, we need to get some sort of trigger out of the first component and place an emit somewhere. An emit will emit an event with a certain name to the parent component that is using this component. We use the else in the start blinker function as the point at which we know that the typing is done. So there we emit the event done typing. To make use of the event, we go back to our parent component and on our first type text line, we say at done typing to receive the event. In the quotes, we can type some logic that is executed when the event is emitted. In our case, we need to store the information that the first line is done. So we'll go to the data section and add a variable called lines done. Lines done will be an object and it will store for each line index if it is done or not. We use an object instead of an array, even though we use indexes, so that when we check an index that doesn't exist yet, we don't get an error, but it simply returns null, which is interpreted as false, meaning not done. To use the lines done variable, we go to our first line component again, and inside the quotes for the logic, the done typing event trigger, we say lines done at index zero equals to true. Now we can use this to set the start trigger of the next line. So we say start trigger equals lines done at index zero. So when the first line is done and sets it to true, the second line starts. We do the same thing but with index 1 for the second line in order to trigger the third line. So we say at done typing equals lines done at index 1 is equal to true. And for the third line, we copy the second line's start trigger and done typing logic and paste it there and adjust the indexes so it works for the third line. Now we don't have a fourth line, so we don't really need the done typing event trigger, but we'll keep it there for consistency. 
All right, if we refresh, we can see that all lines now type one after each other in sequence. Now we can go on to the final feature of this component, which is the indicator that shows that we're hovering above the component. So let's look at our component and check out how we can use Tailwind to control on hover behavior. In the class for the main div surrounding our component, we write hover colon background black and hover colon text white. We also add cursor pointer. This way, when we hover, the background turns black and the text turns white and the cursor pointer means that our mouse will look like the pointy finger indicating that we can click on the text. Now when we hover on the component, we can see that the text turns white and there's a black background and we also notice that the sides of the black box are touching the text. In order to fix that, we need to add some sort of padding to the inside of the black box so the edges of the black box move further away from the text. To do so, we add a padding to the X of 2 increasing the space between the first and last letter and the edges of the box. To make the text more prominent, we can add a class to the div surrounding our text shown and set the font to be more bold. To make the color changes of the background and the text more fancy, we can set a transition to all styles of this div, set the timing function of the transition to ease, and say that the duration of each transition should be 300 milliseconds. This way, when any attribute of this div changes, like when we hover and the background turns black, the transition from white to black takes 300 milliseconds. Now that we're finished with that, we can start working on the arrow that comes in from the right, pointing at our text. To find an icon like this, we use bootstrap icons. So we search bootstrap icons, go to the first page that is found, and then we can search for left. If we scroll down a little bit, we see the double arrow that we used in our example animation. We can click on it and scroll down to copy the SVG code that we can paste into our view component. In our component, we add an extra div, paste in our SVG icon code, save, and then we can see the icon on the right of all the text lines. The icon is rather small, so we increase the icon size by changing the width and height to 20. And then in order to center the icon in the center of the line vertically, we make the parent div a flex box by setting the class to flex, and then saying item center to align all items in the center vertically. And now the arrow is pointing to the middle of the text. Now I'd like the arrow to be slightly further away from the text, so we add a padding left of two to the parent div. To communicate that we're hovering on the component to the arrow for it to move in, we need to create a variable that tracks whether we are hovering above our component. And to trigger whether that variable is set to true or false, indicating that we're hovering or not, we need to add mouse enter and mouse leave events to our main component div. After creating the variable hovering, we go to the mouse entering event and say hovering equals true, and we go to the mouse leave event and say hovering equals false. Now we can create a class with some logic in it on the div surrounding our SVG, which says if we're hovering or the hovering variable equals true, set the text to be black, aka be visible. And if hovering is false or we're not hovering, our arrow should be 20 pixels to the right and the color should be white in order to blend in with the background. When we hover on our components, we see that there is a small mistake. We see that our arrow is incorporated inside the component that shows the background. So to change that, we only set the hovering background above the text. This way the arrow is excluded from the div that shows the black background when we hover. Awesome, now the on hover indicator looks great. To completely finish the animation, there's one more thing we should do. When we refresh the animation, we see that all the lines start with their blinker on. So to finalize, let's go to our type line component and set the starting value for show blinker to false. Boom, there we go, our animation is completed. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you want to see more videos on Vue.js or web development content, let me know in the comments. See you in the next video. Have a nice day. Peace.